Hello, YouTubes. So I've got this uh, Gilman mask I bought last year, uh, 2019, after Halloween sale at uh, Myers. I think it was like two or three bucks. It's a pretty cool mask. It's one of them hollow Ben Cooper style masks, but it's kind of flimsy as you can see. Well, I want to do last year like I did with my concrete skulls. I want to make a concrete gill man and we'll make some more concrete skulls. But because this is so flimsy, I'm worried about the concrete crushing the mask. The skulls are pretty small, so they're not bad. They hold up pretty well to the concrete for being a smaller thing, uh, mold, but this guy's a whole lot bigger. So my plan is uh, to go ahead and put him inside of a box and I'm gonna spray great stuff foam in the box, put the mask inside. This should hopefully uh, hold the mask while it's drying for concrete. Uh, I did come with some green lenses in his eyes. Uh, I already took these out and put them on the front side of the mask where they used to be on the back side, like a little visor you look through. Um, since this is gonna be our finished side, so I wanna go ahead and set him up so that in a couple of months and it warms up, we can go ahead and make some concrete gill man. And they'll put it in some green writ dye and see how that turns out. So I wanna go ahead and get the box set up, lay out some foam, get a glove on. I wanna make a bed of foam for this thing and then maybe I'll fill it with some water or push it down uh, just to make sure that this thing kind of seats itself so we can make some concrete gill men and see how those turn out. So I'll bring it in and uh, we'll lay some foam down on this thing. I'm really going to want to put this probably towards the center. It would be better off in the corner. Now, yeah, we'll just lay some foam. We'll figure it out. I just want to make a nice heavy bed for this thing so that this mass doesn't cave in while it's got you know, probably 5, 10 pounds of foam in there. I don't know. Or 5, 10 pounds of concrete in there. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's probably good enough. All right. I'm going to kind of slap this thing down to settle. And then I'll press this mask in here. And let that stuff foam up around it and hopefully cure. And that way, I can fill this thing with concrete. And we'll see if we can't make a concrete Gilman mask. Okay, YouTubes, so it's been a couple of months since I've uh, foam filled this box with this uh, Gilman mask. Uh, I think I'm ready to go ahead and put some concrete in. It's a nice 90 degree day here in Indiana. So I brought uh, our little mold out. I'm not going to use any mold release. I'm going to pour concrete right in here. Uh, pour concrete. I went to Menard. I've got a bag of All Star Mason Type S Mortar Mix. It's the smooth stuff. Um, I'm going to try that. Kind of keep the Gilman kind of smooth. And whatever overflow we have, we're going to use some skulls and brains up. So we'll have uh, plenty of those to go around. And then I got my uh, little pink gardening plastic trowel to smooth stuff out and uh, dump stuff in. I got a hose in the garage. What could go wrong with that? So we're going to mix in some water. Make some concrete. And we're going to pour us a gillman, some skulls, some brains. Uh, because we got to get these guys in the sun, they got to cure for 28 days technically before we can put any stain on them. So we'll see. We'll probably do an early batch just for the hell of it. So I'm going to go ahead and start making some concrete, adding some water. I want to get this to a nice, uh, probably a little more wetter than peanut butter consistency. So it'll flow into that mold nice and wet. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this stuff up and then we'll make some mud pies. So I'll be back in a second to show you what we got. Okay, YouTube, so our concrete's all mixed up. It's got a nice uh, half-melted uh, blizzard type of uh, consistency to it, so it kind of splatters in. It's a little bit watery. That's going to let us go down there and fill all our little uh, little cracks and crevices on this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and fill him up. I could probably just go ahead and dump the bucket. Get him topped off. There we go. If I got too much, I'll just scrape it off. So we got plenty in the buckets. So we can make a brain and a couple of skulls, but I want to crank out a bunch of these uh, gill men to see if technically it even works. I think we could probably go a little more. I should probably knock that foam even with it so I can have an even drag across the back, which I'll probably do for the next one. But in the meantime, let's throw some more on there. That's probably more than enough. And get it all the way to the edges. Kind of pat it down a little bit, get some air bubbles out. 
See how it kind of slides around a little bit? I'm liking this. Okay. So, I'm going to just see how it kind of self-levels itself. We're going to do that. We're going to leave him as is. I'm going to put him out in the sun on the bench so he can start curing. And then I'll go ahead and I'll fill up a couple of skulls and maybe a brain if we got some left. And then uh, this guy will be curing so we can pop him out. And then I'm going to try and make a couple of batches every day, make a couple of more. So we'll have plenty of extra skulls, plenty of extra brains. So once this guy's ready to come out of the mold, I'll turn the camera back on in a day or so. I want to give it a good 24 hours in the sun to bake. He'll turn a light gray color, and then I know he's good to go and come out. So, Alrighty, YouTubes. It's been about 24 hours. I've had this guy baking in the back of my truck. Um, I think we're ready to pop him out. Uh... I do have some changes to make to this mold. I can see we got a little bit of rough edges right here where I couldn't get to scraping off the foam because the foam is higher than the mold. So once we pop this out, I'm going to shave this down. And I think I'm going to go back in with probably some caulk. And I think I'm going to put it in the lower areas uh, to give this thing some more support. Once I get everything shaved down even so that I can take a paint stick, once the, uh, the next load of concrete is in, is in there, I can shave it all down. It'll be one level, make it nice and neat in the back. I did go ahead and add a piece of baling wire in the back. Uh, I just knotted up the ends of the threads of the string and put it in place so I can actually hang the thing. But this is the first one, so let's go ahead and pop this sucker out and see what it looks like. That way, I'm going to mix up some more concrete today and I'm going to make another one until I get this thing basically perfected. So let's see what happens. Again, I did not use a mold release. I've never done that in my other ones. Oh, there he is. That was pretty fast. Wow, so it looks like we lost some nose. I'm gonna have to pop that out of there. So not a great pull, but the next one should be better. I'll get this guy out of there. But he's not bad for the first one. We lost some of the top of the head, a little spiky area, but he still looks pretty cool overall. He's nice and hot still. But yeah, I'm gonna clean that mold out. I'm going to make some more concrete, we're going to try again and see if we can't get a better version of this guy. But uh, overall, not hateful. I'm pretty happy with that. The eyes turned out pretty good. He looks a little rustic, so I'm going to throw him in the back of the truck to dry, and we'll just keep him outside like a stepping stone. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some more concrete, we're going to make another one, and then I'll come back in 24 hours later, and we'll see how that guy turned out. Okay, YouTubes, so I lied to your faces. It's been a couple of days. I went ahead and made a second uh, gill man. Uh, this is actually the third gill man. We made this guy original. We lost our nose and a little bit of his crest. I made this guy, and I lost a corner of his cheek, so I wasn't happy with him. Although he did come out better in detail. So we're actually going to demold number three. So hopefully the third time's the charm. If not, I got a plan. Cobwebs always has a plan. So I've actually had this guy in here for, oh, he's been drying for about two days now. I had uh, already run a screwdriver around the lip. Figured maybe if I gave him some more drying time, it'd be less chance to crack. So I'm hoping to slide him out now. So let's demold this guy and see what he looks like. And if this guy fails, well then we gotta go to plan the A, B, C, plan D. And I, again, I went ahead and I molded a little uh, wire in the back of this guy. Oh, okay. Wow, he came right out of there. Now, this time, I did go ahead and brush mold release in there. He's a lot better, but man, we lost a freaking corner. God damn it. Okay, so he's better. Um, but we lost a little corner over here, which not bad. We'll still keep him and put him outside like a paving stone. Um, but he's getting there. So now that we got three gill men, my plan is to go ahead and clean the mold again. Although it came out pretty clean. For using this type S mason, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll spray wet or uh, mold release in there again. Just smooth on mold release, and I'll brush it with a uh, soft bristle. But it's kind of hard and stiff, and I'll bust that out and get any of the little loose concrete out. So I'll clean him up again. We are definitely going to go again. I have got to get the damn good pull already. So today, anticipating epic failure, I stopped at the Home Depot. And I picked up some Rapid Set Cementol and a little baggie of uh, hardening cream or something like that. I don't know what the hell it does. It was next to the concrete. Uh, this is actually made for molding or castings as well as sidewalks and small repairs. So 
We're going back to the drawing board. I'm gonna mix up a batch of this bad boy. I'm gonna add some hardener in there, give it a couple of days in the mold, and we come back, we're gonna pop out a number four gill man, and hopefully the fourth time is a charm. So I will see you in a couple more days and we do it all over again. Okay, YouTubes, it's been about two weeks. I have lied to your faces. Uh, every time I crack a mold, I talk to my uh, buddy, who's a retired mason, and he said, leave it in your form for like two weeks, a month if you can. I ain't got a month, I don't wanna wait a month. I hate waiting. So I'm gonna unmold this thing, it's been about two weeks. Let's see if uh, this thing comes out in one whole piece, or if it's gonna be an epic fail. I went ahead and pried out the back of the mold, the little edges and stuff. So let me see if we can crack this guy loose and see what the hell we end up with. Of course, I don't have a ring in the back of this guy this time, so. <sighs> this is not gonna come out easy. All right, I'm gonna prime this guy a little bit, and when I get this thing popped out, I'm gonna come back and show you what he looks like out of the mold. All right, he cracked loose. He's about ready to come out. Let's see what we got. Okay, this one looks pretty good. I didn't crack any fins this time. I think this is my fifth one. Let's bring them in. This is just water, uh, stained water that I shot the back to keep the uh, concrete wet when it was drain when it was drying. Um, this guy I'd say is probably the best one I've had out of all of them. He's pretty thick. He's heavy. He's about ten pounds. I'm gonna. Uh, Go get the rest of ones. We're gonna see all my first failures. I think this is number five to get this guy right here. But I think he turned out pretty cool, man. He's got a little bit of a uh, green rit dye water on him. But uh, I'm gonna go get the other one, set them all up, and show you the process of what I did and how I did it. Okay guys, so we're all set up. This is what we started with. Just a Ben Cooper style uh, creature mask that I foam filled into a box. That was our basic mold. Um, I started with Type S All-Star Mason Mortar Mix from Menards. I think this is like uh, eight or nine bucks a bag. I got this guy out first. I lost his fin. I lost his nose, a little bit of his fins. Um, and he's been sitting in Rit Dive for a couple days and I pulled him out. Um, same with this guy. My second attempt was this guy. Again, he was all Type S Mortar. And I lost fins over here and a little bit. He was a better pull, but not as bad. Um, and again, he was in Rit Dye for a couple of days, so he didn't turn out too hateful. Um, my third attempt, again, all Type S Mason Mortar. I lost a big chunk of his ear. And again, I know if I left him in the, in the mold too long. Um, and this guy, I did not dunk. This guy, my favorite, my go-to, my Rit Dye in a spray bottle with some water. Um, so that's what this guy is. That's the color green he is. But again, I lost a big chunk of the fin and I was so pissed off at this point, I said, all right, I'm going to a new concrete. So I switched over to the Rapid, cement, rapid Set Cement All. That was my next, uh, my next try having to go with the Gill Man. So I got this guy out. I pulled him out of the mortar and lost a big corner of the fin. I don't know if it's because it was too thin out by the edges, but again, I gave it like two days before I popped this guy out. So... I was so pissed off, I talked to my buddy. He's a retired bricklayer. He was like, leave it in the mold. Uh, concrete's got to cure for 28 days. So this is my last and final attempt. And this guy right here that I just pulled out of the mold is actually a mix of cementol and the Type S mortar. So he's 50-50 of both. And that basically gave me the best result. Um, I'm happy with him. The other ones are cool. They're a little beat up. Missing some pieces, but they'll still look good next to the garage. Almost like a stepping stone. So uh, it takes 28 days for concrete to cure. You're not supposed to put anything on it. So let's go ahead and paint this guy with some red dye. Because we hate freaking waiting here. So we're going to get set up. I got my uh, red dye. I'm going to go with the uh, Esmeralda color. I'm going to brush this on. It is water-based. It'll stain in. Uh, I can't seal any of these for 28 days because if it holds the moisture in, uh, they'll turn white. And I'll show you that in a bit. So I'm going to get some gloves. I'm going to get ready, I'm going to get him up in the air a little bit, and we're going to throw some, uh, some green, green red dye on him, like, just like paint. Alright, we're set to go. Now, with concrete, you got to wait 28 days. 
This skull I made last year, and if you seal them too fast and put too much stuff on them before the day cures, they turn white. That's all kinds of humidity and stuff trying to come out of the concrete and cure. So this will happen underneath your paint. So we're not aiming for that, which means I'm gonna go ahead and paint this guy with Rit dye. I'm just gonna dip him with an acid brush. This is emerald. And I'm gonna brush this on. I'm gonna do the whole skull, let it soak. I think one coat will probably be enough. I'm gonna sit it out in the sun after I paint this guy up. And again, I'm just gonna brush it on. This is a mix of both that hydraulic cement rapid set and the Type S mortar. So this stuff takes paint a little bit harder. The concrete is more porous. That stuff sucks up uh, Rit dye in a heartbeat. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this guy out with our Rit dye. Okay, so we got this guy all painted out with our Rit dye. It's been eh, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes so, but it's 90 degrees outside. So we're gonna let this guy dry. And then for our last guy over here at no paint, we're gonna go ahead and throw a coat of Rust-Oleum uh, marking paint it's used for marking out chalk lines and uh, baseball fields and stuff so I just want to try it on this stone and see how long it lasts and how long it holds up so that'll be a little experiment so I'm gonna get him painted up I'm gonna let him dry and then we'll throw them all on the table and we'll do a big review of all our gill men okay YouTube so final result I got all my gill men done these first three were the uh, Mason uh, M mix and Failure number one, we lost a nose, a bunch of the things. There's still a big crack in his head, but I still think he looks pretty cool. These guys all stayed in Rit dye. Here's my third failure. This guy is just sprayed on Rit dye in a water bottle. Um, lost a big chunk of him too in the corner. Uh, this one is the mix, or this is one is the straight uh, cement, which was kind of brittle, and I lost a chunk of him. And this was a mix of both the mortar and the rapid set stuff. And he turned out the best, and he is just dry brushed with um, Rit dye. So overall, I think everything turned out good. Um, I'm happiest with this guy at the end. So these other guys are all kind of my four failures to get to this point, but overall I'm happy with them. They'll look cool sitting out in the yard. So uh, what can I say? I finally got one concrete gill man, one good one out of five. So if you guys like this, just leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked about it. And uh, I am gonna be doing a uh, black light video pretty soon on rattle cans. So we can do that for uh, before Halloween. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you get a chance, go check out my brothers in a trio of terror, Vic Springson or Dave at the Weird Kid Show channel. Uh, we're doing uh, big projects and we're working our asses off all the way to Halloween, guys. So uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Until I see you again, keep it evil.